I'm not fully recovered from night one, but let's go night two. Of subdued depressed vibes tonight because bonnie has gone home i didn't really vlog over the past couple of days while we were just hanging out i was working she was working so we did pop into a barnes and noble if you are from north texas and understand the magic of the south lake barnes and noble i had to make sure bonnie experienced it yes the escalator was out of order like it always is so she got the full experience but while we we're there she picked up a book and i grabbed two books for some reason all of our books were pink Slay! So it was really cute. I'm justifying this one because I've already read it. I loved this book. It made me laugh. It made me cry. And I love this new cover. So I have the previous cover that Bonnie was supposed to take home with her, but her backpack was packed full of things. So I will be mailing it. But anyway, loved it. She hasn't read it. And that gave me the excuse to buy this one. So I did. And the other pink book on my agenda was the sequel to This Woven Kingdom. These Infinite Threads by Tahada Mafi, which I could have bought at North Texas Teen Book Fest and it got signed, but I did not. I didn't think I would love book one enough to want to continue this, let alone continue it immediately and buy the hardcover. And I don't know if you can tell, but my Furyborn series, which is one of my favorite of all time, is not a matching set. I have a paperback for the first book, which I think is kind of cute. I'm not mad about an unmatching set because that means I read book one at a point in my life when it had been out for a while and I was waiting for reviews, but then book two, I hopped on it and needed the hardcover. Pre-ordered book three, hardcover, day it came out. So I don't know, I think it tells a story. I have a hunch this will be better than book one and a couple of commenters have confirmed it so eager to read this soon a uh, quick update i am five chapters 46 pages into legends and lattes by travis baldry it's so good the writing of it oh my god it's so atmospheric you feel like you're there you're like i am an orc helping her build this coffee shop. It's interesting because I feel like I would describe this as like right now nothing's really happening, but it's still so good. It also helps that I just started Skyrim on Xbox for the first time, I'd never played it. And so I'm miserably failing at that because I don't understand the world. I don't understand the magic system. It's so hard to play and I'm bad at it, but those two things combined are really fun. I wanted to get a couple of chapters of this read before bed because it's just so nice. It's some good wind down material. Hello, I have reached my final form. My good friend Sonia has told me about this and I've had it in the back of my head. And finally, I just made the dive and splurged. But the Kindle stand and remote so you can read without touching it combination, my life has changed. I just have this propped up here. This remote changes the page. You can't go back, you can only go forward. When I tell you I read an entire book last night in two hours, like this just no arms out no uncomfy read my book like this 
this is a god ordained invention so that being said little reading update I read a novella last night. As we all know, I love the, what's the series even called? It's the first book is The Lady of Rook's Grave Manor by Catherine Moon. Catherine Moon is the best author of all time. I adore her. There's two books in the series. I think there's meant to be a lot more. Maybe that's wishful thinking. But there's a novella in the series I hadn't read called The Basilisk of Star Manor. Here's the cover drawing. I had no idea what this was about, but it's set in the same world and I love it love 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 this woman so as i mentioned i read it in one count them one sitting last night it was so cool i wouldn't recommend reading it as a standalone because there's a lot like the guy works for the villain of the series so you kind of need that context but it's about this guy who's a basilisk which the only thing i knew about that was like oh a snake but he's basically human he can shape shift but he's basically human however he has a lethal gaze so anyone who looks at him dies so he wears like sunglasses and like blindfolds and stuff so that no one gets hurt but then this is another one of those like matchmaking series but he is matched with a girl woman i should say who is blind it was amazing i loved it Maybe like four stars. This is another one of those Catherine Moon books where there's a lot more plot than romance. But it was still so much fun. Catherine Moon is such a good writer. It was so cool. Again, I don't recommend reading it without having known the series context. But if you've read the series and you have Kindle Unlimited, worth the two hours. But I just started a new book that, oddly enough, Sonya also recommended. Um, This is an author that Sonya really likes. Lily Gold. They recommended all of her books, basically. But I'm starting with one on Kindle Unlimited, Kindle Unlimited called Nanny for the Neighbors. It's about this woman who's about to get evicted from her apartment because she lost her job a year ago nannying and still has not been able to find one. Until... Her upstairs neighbors are like, oh no, this baby has landed on our doorstep. Kind of unclear so far whose baby it is, but I think that's part of the shtick. We need someone to help take care of this baby because we're men and don't know how to do that. So they're like, please come help us. It's called the why choose trope, which is just a weird way of just saying reverse harem. It's one lady and three guys. Yes, I'm a whore. You don't need to ask. And so far, I'm 4% in, so don't take this too literally. It says I still have five hours left in the book, but so good so far. It's funny. It's addicting. I will be using my remote and quite possibly finishing this tonight. So everyone say thank you, Sonia, for the recommendation. Also, this bitch goes out of stock on Amazon all the time i basically had like an alert on for when this comes back in stock if you have mobility issues or you're just lazy highly recommend hi children if you perceive that my foundation does not match my neck no you didn't because at this point anything i buy is the wrong color so i give up i'm currently getting ready to go to easter church service i am braver than the u.s marines so before i go sit in silence for an hour and listen to a guy review uh, one of the oldest books of all time fictional or not debatable i have a reading update I not only got further into, I finished the one Lily Rose book I was reading. I forgot what it's called. The Gimme a Daddy, Nanny Needs a Daddy, whatever it's called. I read it in two good old fashioned sittings. I devoured it. Partly because I love my new Kindle setup. It's just so cozy and fun. Partly also because it was addicting and I couldn't put it down. For a book that revolves around a kid, I am not the audience for that and yet I loved it. Even when I told Bonnie I was reading it, she was like, a book with a kid, are you okay? It was so sweet. It wasn't overly corny. The characters were believable and like all of them had these backstories that just meshed so well. I think it's really interesting because the main character comes from the foster care system in the UK. And so she had a lot of like abandonment and trust issues and all the men, I mean, most men in the world, but the men in this book too specifically had like family issues where they felt estranged. So it teed up this really nice relationship dynamic for them to be in this like polyamorous situation. Part of me does wish that the guys were more than just like, college dude bros who all bang the same woman like they really have no connection other than like being friends and it's like okay well if y'all are gonna spend the rest of your lives with each other that's a little fruity i mean it worked in the book but i was like so yeah i think i'm gonna give that book like four stars it had it was like 450 pages which if i'm gonna sit here and tell you it's good that means it was worth the time i know this author has like 
three or four other books that basically follow the same format. It's like a woman and three men. God forbid in all of them it's just the same dynamic where they're all just buddies that like banging the same woman. I don't know why I keep saying banging like I'm a 12 year old, but if that was that author's debut that was solid. So I'm sure it will only go uphill from there. Either way, I recommend it. And if you're not into nannies, which I'm definitely not, I am very much fuck them kids. I still think you'd like that one. Or there's a bunch of other situations. Like the other one I really want to read. I mean, there's several I'll read now. But the one I'm surprised I didn't pick up sooner is like, I forget what it's called. It's like something something and her mountain men, lumberjacks or just like men out in the country. Like I said, that was like a four star book. I devoured it. So highly recommend. This is Mr. Oliver. My dad's been sick, so he hasn't been brushing him like usual. He needs it bad. <laughs> Are you shedding, bud? That's everything I got off so far. This is just with my hands. Goodness. dinner. Yeah, I'm backlit. Yeah, my hair's been in a bun, so it looks crazy. But I had a shift today volunteering at the bookstore, which means I'm gonna do another segment of it was a dollar. Cause most of the books there are a dollar. And usually I don't get that many things, but today was a steal. My excuse is that there was a girl who came in saying that she was gonna donate all of her dead grandmother's collection. And I was like, great, it's gonna be trashy books that no one cares about and there were some gems. So all of this cost me like $14. Okay, so the couple of steals that I found from this grandmother's collection, rest in peace her soul, but I will be enjoying her books because her children refused to. First of all, The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. This is from 1989 and it's in immaculate condition. Also, a 1981 version of Cujo by Stephen King. And then I couldn't believe I found this, a hardcover of The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I don't know why I had to rotate it. I was like, it's a hardcover, I'll prove it. And this is a 1986 version, which possibly is the first edition. So I'm like, hello. And then she had a bunch of books without dust jackets on them. And one of them was just this. Like this book is more for decoration than anything else. But how cute in the spine. You might remember last time I was there, I bought some books in the Princess Diary series. And I just decided like, why leave the rest to someone who's never gonna buy just books four and five in a series? I picked these up as well, but I talked about this in my last vlog. I just love the writing style of this series. And if you love the movie, you'll love the books. They're so 1990s. I found a copy of I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, which I've been meaning to read. I found a couple of middle grade books. It's interesting because I don't love middle grade, but these just look so precious. How could I not? Gordo agrees, it looks good, right? This is two orphans that go on an adventure. It's set in 1914 and then a century later. It just says it's a remarkable debut fantasy novel featuring a ship full of orphaned children, a pair of warring royals and plenty of magic potions. It just sounded so fun. Another middle grade that I saw, this is an ex library copy, but I don't care. Song for a Whale. Um, I just skimmed the synopsis, but it's about a 12 year old girl who's deaf and she hears about this whale who sings and is the loneliest whale in the world and she wants to go and meet him. For some reason, reading the words 12 year old girl, I was like, 
to be a 12 year old girl again so i bought it hi oh he wants cuddles so bad we can cuddle in a little bit bud only a few more we're getting to the middle of the end someone donated their collector's american girl doll hardcover of Kaya, which is the doll that I had, which we're on thin ice here because I guarantee some white person wrote this. What is this? Oh, someone had their 10 commandments bookmark in here. I thought it was money. Anyway, this was the American Girl doll that I had and we had these books, my sister and I, but she took all of them. So I feel like I deserve this for a dollar. And then I just liked this spine. And when I picked it up, it was also really cool. This is by Gregory McGuire who wrote Wicked. Really have no stinking clue what this is about. I was gonna oh, I was gonna read the synopsis and find out, but then somebody's grandmother, actually I know who, Natalie, your grandmother wrote you this note in the beginning of this book that says, we are so proud of your love of reading. It will take you so very far in life. Love, Nana and Nona. One, I'm upset that she got rid of this because that is the sweetest thing I've ever read. But two, I want to go far in life. So I don't know. I want to live vicariously through this, through this. Again, I didn't read the synopsis because I got distracted, but Gregory McGuire, like it'll be fun, right? Okay, I already know. This is going to be something that I get and then don't touch, but one can dream. Someone donated the complete tale and poems of Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe in this edition. Like, was I gonna be like, okay, let me shelf this? No, I was gonna take it for me. If anything, I just need to revisit a classic just to read one, one little crumb out of this. Oh, The Fall of the House of Usher. Perfect. Done. The book fell open to that page, so obviously me and one other person were like, we'll just read The Fall of the House of Usher and mark it as read. Okay, two more. This one, I sat there and I like put it back and picked it up and put it back and picked it up. We go out and back in. And then we go out. I know we just said I don't read mysteries, but there was this cute little Agatha Christie red copy. It's a short story compilation. There's like four of them in here and one of them's a Christmas one. My caveman brain was like, read it during Christmas. I don't even read mysteries, but I feel like I need to read Agatha Christie at some point in my life, right? But yeah, if I don't end up reading this, my mom loves Agatha Christie. So I might just pass this on to her. And finally, I got Walk Across America by Peter Jenkins, which a YouTuber that I follow who does like off-roading and like lives full time just out of her car has read this and loved it. So I was like, me too. Full disclosure, I'm still currently reading Le Legends and Lattes, which is, at this point, like a week overdue at the library and I keep being like, I'm gonna finish it. The worst thing they could have ever done is take away late fees because now I have no incentive to give this to the next person until I finish it because I'm so close. I have like 50 pages left. This book is so cute. I keep putting it down because it's not like the most action packed thing, but every time I read it, I enjoy it. So I just need to stop putting it off. I don't know what was on these books, but my cats are going feral sniffing them and scratching them so i need to put these away but i'm gonna try and finish legends and lattes so that i can walk to the library and put it back so that this poor person after me can have their shot at it i'm so sorry that was bad karma i should return it today i'm gonna return it today okay if you couldn't tell from me looking like a tomato i just got back from my hot girl walk because i finished legends and lattes i was attempting to get to the library before they closed but i was unsuccessful so time to review legends and lattes part of me wants to be able to put you in the blinds is that gonna work wait Okay, we have two hours until Secret Songs at the Taylor Swift concert, which means I have two hours. Oh, I'm reviewing a book right now. Legends and Lattes. You've seen the cover. I've had it for like two weeks. It was so cute. I know this is news to no one and I'm not adding anything to the conversation about cozy fantasy. Like many people, that was my first foray into that genre and I really liked her. I think if you're just looking for like, you want a fantasy book, but you don't want to have to get to know like a really intricate world or you don't care about politics. Maybe like if you're a contemporary or a romance reader and you've never read fantasy and you want to get into like some higher fantasy with different kinds of creatures in it, this is a safe place to start. Or if you're a guru and you just want something that's a change of pace, it would also be pretty fun. I think I'm gonna give it like four stars. Even though toward the middle, I felt a lull. I think it was more of a me problem than the book's problem because again, every time I got back to the book, I was like, oh yeah, this is still like funny and witty and it's really hard to not describe this book as cozy because that just feels too on the nose, but it really is. I think the author has a really great writing style that mimics the type of story that you're in and the environment. So I'd be interested in reading more from him for sure. There's also like a sprinkling of female female romance in this book, which if this is like a cis het man writing 
that I was like a little icked. It was like Jay Kristoff trying to write female female romance. I was like, it's for the girls. That's for girls only. But I mean, I'm happy it was there. Tall girl representation too. The ending actually made me like get a bit teary. So that was really cute, but yeah. I'm so sorry to the person who was waiting for that book from my library, but you can have it now. It was really good. It was worth the wait. <laughs> I was building up the anticipation for you. Here's my toxic trait. My reward for going on that walk is I get to now lay in bed. This feels like when you're at the dentist office and they bring the lighting from overhead. This is my ebook I'm currently reading. I'm reading, oh gosh, this is the one thing about this stand is that if you nudge it or if the cats touch it, it does that. I'm reading Bad Alpha by Catherine Moon. This is the sixth book in the Sweet Verse series, which is... Are we gonna have to get into this? All right. Hey guys, Whitney reads Omegaverse. <laughs> TikTok has really aided in how normalized it is to read like porn and depraved romance. But I don't know if we are that far into it where I can just say Omegaverse and everyone knows what I'm talking about. Cause it was new to me like a year ago. Long story short, it's just, it's a universe. They're all humans, but it, there's this, not even fantastical, but just like otherworldly aspect where people are betas, omegas, and alphas. So the, all the books in the series follow like different scenarios and most of them are like reverse harem with like an omega or a beta and like all these alphas and betas that are drawn to them and they form packs and they like mate and <laughs> and they bond with each other. It sounds so bad, but why is it so good? Catherine Moon Co. writes this series with another author, I think, named Lana Cole. So the first one was about a girl and like a biker gang, which wasn't my vibe, but I just wanted to get through that one to get to the next ones. Because the next two are like parts one and two of Lola and the Billionaires, or maybe Millionaires, I don't remember. Lola, who's a beta, and this group of rich guys. And that one was really, both of those were really good. The fourth one is Lyric of the Heartbeats, which is written by the other author which is about a singer on tour so it's like close proximity in the tour bus with all these men the fifth one i did not like i literally dnf'd it after a couple of chapters because i was not feeling it and then i took a break and now i'm reading this one so long story short this one is about this woman named eve she's a like bounty hunter like hitman and she's a female alpha which is the first time catherine has written about that so it's like <gasps> That's rare. Oh, and a male Omega, which is like not typical. The male Omega's name's Adam, Adam and Eve, shoot me. He has a hit on him because he's trying to take down like an Omega trafficking company and Eve is assigned to him. But then before killing him, she's like, uh -huh, smash? Cause they're such a rare pairing. And then she, in a moment of passion, bites him, which like bonds them together. This sounds so crazy. Everyone here is probably becoming the horny police and is like, why? would that sound good but it is it is a 500 page book like i have been reading this for a hot minute actually that's a lie i've read basically half of it in one sitting and you know me i don't like thrillers i don't like adventure hitman like running from the police action adventure type things i am eating this one up because now that they're bonded she has to like take him with her and escape and then he like reveals to her like oh the reason i have this hit is because i'm trying to do a good thing and she's like oh but she is like so non-emotional and just like so hard to crack and he's just needs so much comfort and validation <laughs> i'm like this is such a funny duo I'm loving it. So I'm on page 241, which is only 47% of the way through. Catch me like this for the next three hours. I'm gonna devour this. I would not recommend this genre or series to someone who is not into like monster romances or it's not a very adventurous reader. They're so good, especially this one. This one's like leaning toward 4.5 stars. So if you're wondering where the rest of the vlog is, I'm like, me too. I'm editing this and realized I never gave you a final wrap up for Bad Alpha, but I pretty much talked about everything. The angst and the grumpy versus sunshine trope comes off so strong in this one. If you liked Nesta from A Court of Silver Flames, it kind of has the same vibe of she's just this like uncrackable meanie. It's not a recommendation I'll give broadly because if you are under 18 or you're not into like non-biological, I don't know. Ugh. It's like pretty akin to fantasy romance. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it unless 
You wanna try something really new? The universe is conspiring against me to not post this vlog because my phone just died, but I'm gonna end off the vlog here. I have a lot more footage to edit, but we are already at like a half hour episode, so you are cut off. Okay, doke, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time around. Bye.